Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to test out yet another silly idea I've had, which is to put Star Stage 2, which was developed for Starship, on top of the Orion carrier plane, which was originally meant to lift the Orion 3 space plane to orbit. But the Orion 3 space plane is just a passenger liner, it's not meant to carry cargo. And I've wanted to turn the Orion carrier plane into a cargo first stage for a very long time. And uh, for those who don't know, the Orion carrier plane is a reusable first stage that launches vertically like it is right now, but lands at Cape Canaveral after launching from Boca Chica in Texas, as long as you don't put too much of a burden on top of it. So it's been pretty good about doing this. It can uh, go the way without even using its jet engines, which it's fitted with. Uh, so we do have jet engines there, and we have kerosene in a tank for them, but I rarely need to use them. And uh, it's been pretty reliable as long as we don't overstress the wings, which we can. They can break off. Yeah, so it's been reliable in that respect, and I wanted to make it into a cargo first stage, but we didn't really have a good cargo uh, second stage to go with it. And so I've decided to make a special star stage 2 a little bit between the size that I put into Starship and the size that I put on SLS. Now, this was originally meant to be an interplanetary transfer stage that would give an initial boost to things and then they would continue the rest of the way but it would recapture into Earth orbit and come back down. Uh, now it's being used as a second stage uh, so we needed more powerful engines. So not the original engines, the, met the little methane oxygen engines we had before. So I fitted with four Prometheus vacuum engines. Now they don't quite fit um, and actually we don't need four of them. If you take a look at the burn time, we could do well with just one. Uh, that would be pushing it, maybe two. But uh, the reason I put four is because there is a chance that this could burn quickly enough that we could switch back to the Orion carrier plane to land it. Uh, so that is my hope. I don't know if one minute and 45 seconds is quick enough. Um, uh, but anyway, we are going to be underestimating the cargo capacity because we're carrying more engines, so we could easily improve the cargo capacity if we use fewer engines. These are the stats I have. 368 seconds, vacuum ISP might be a little bit optimistic, I think it's more like 360. Uh, but again, we're overestimating in another direction, so it's fine. And we've got 1080 kilonewtons. Also, probably it's not going to be this heavy. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, it's fairly heavy, 1.364 tons. Uh, it's possible that they can get less, but anyway, we do have other impediments. We have this sort of arrangement to basically aero shield the heat shield here, because we've got the heat shield here, and so we needed something. These are just empty tanks, and that's about 2.3 tons of structure that we really didn't want, but I didn't want to carry a full 8.4 meter fairing, which is the diameter of this. And so since I didn't want the 8.4 meter fairing, we had to do this. Also, this tank creates a convenient place for the space plane to attach. And then we have our 30 ton payload. It's 30 tons there. And so that is the test payload. I don't know if we can get 30 tons to orbit, but we'll find out. So that is the idea. We have on the Orion carrier plane nine Raptor engines, sea level. They are tuned to uh, the, what I call the Raptor Max configuration, which seems to best match what Raptor 2 might be able to do. I thought about putting a single Raptor vacuum engine on this, but it does sort of poke out quite a lot. And in fact, uh, these wouldn't be ideal uh, the way they are, but they're not, not horrible, I guess. Um, they're a little bit heavy, though. The Raptor vacuum engine might be better, but wouldn't produce as much thrust. It'd be just easier to just have two of these. So anyway, that's the idea for now though, uh, so let's see what happens. Okay, so here we are, and it looks a bit awkward on top of this, but at least its diameter is not much greater than the diameter of the space plane itself, and it is a space plane, it will go into space, it's just not getting orbital. So yeah, yeah, it's not too bad, could be worse with the SLS version. Anyway, 9 Raptor engine ignition launch and actually we don't want that active right now but we don't have the RCS on anyway so it's fine the 
doesn't matter. So actually you want a heading of 75 and a roll of 180 right now. 75 will get us to Cape Canaveral from Boca Chica. A little bit hard to decide exactly what trajectory we should use. On the one hand, we need to give the... If we want to switch back to the carrier plane, we want to give it enough time so uh, time to apoapsis so that we can do the entire burn and then switch back. On the other hand, the stage burns so quickly that we don't need that much time to apoapsis for it to complete its work. We need maybe 40, 50 seconds before apoapsis. So somewhat competing interests there. Once we get to high g-forces, we'll shut down the bomb four engines that will also help with the balance. Not that g-forces are a big deal considering this stage is going to impart quite a lot of them. Alright, shutting down the bottom four. We should roll around now. Uh, I feel like I should switch off another engine here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh, RCS on. Uh, okay, uh, shut down, shut down. Uh, okay. We are a bit imbalanced. Alright, well, we better separate as soon as possible. We've got plenty of time to apoapsis though, so a little bit of a coast isn't horrible as long as we stop rotating. Yeah, I might need to work on the balance of this. Okay, well, it's roughly pointed prograde. Let's separate. Not the orientation I want for this, but... Alright, throttle up and ignition. The engines can get back. Oh, oh, it hit the... Ah, jeez. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we're not getting the space plane back. On the other hand, if we get this to orbit, well, that'll validate the 30, col uh, 30 ton capacity at least. Oh, maybe we shouldn't release the fairings until we get to orbit. We can try and switch back to the space plane to see if we had enough time. I did put parachutes on here, so it is potentially recoverable. Okay, and shut down. Uh, 216 by 168. Well, we'll need to go with the map view to switch back. It looks like we can switch back, so that's important. But we're missing part of the wing. <laughs> so, okay, I need to check out what I'm supposed to do with the action groups, clearly. I don't know. I guess we can always see what happens when it's missing part of the wing. Now, of course, the recoverable... Hydrolock stage would be more efficient, but also be bulkier. Again, and not so convenient. Maybe we should just have the top two active at the end. Or we could move the... Maybe we should move the payload up a bit. That'll make it easier to point through its center of mass. Com the combined center of mass. Well, here we go. It's not that fast, but the stress will be pretty bad for everything but the body. Oh, it's trying really valiantly though. And now aerodynamics will not be kind to it. We would have probably preferred if the other wing just ripped off. I mean, it's still a very heavy stage. Um, at this point, we should just purge the RCS. Uh, that annoying sound persists. Yes, it all got wrecked except for landing gear. The landing gear survived. Okay, let's try this once again. I'm going to configure some orbital info up there because I want to keep seeing the actuation controls down here instead of switching to the orbit information. Okay, so I moved the payload up. I changed the action groups a little bit. Uh, which engines switch off. Maybe it'll help. Let's find out. Ignition. And launch. 
Just need to keep stability and focus on the separation between the stages. Make sure that's all clean and everything else seemed to work out fine. I think we only really wanted to get to 4,000 meters per second orbital velocity. Tops. Okay, bottom engine switch off. Okay, RCS on and switching off two more engines. Okay, again, I think that's all we want. We do need to reserve some fuel for the RCS on the carrier plane. We can wait till it stabilizes. Maybe? <laughs> oh, yes, let's, uh, well, let's separate now, actually. And here, we need to make sure that it's controlling from here. Let's keep that. Uh, let's go to 40 degree pitch there. Back over here, um, we will activate the engines and point prograde. Uh, do we have time here? Ah, I changed my windows. Ah, it's got that window instead. Shoot. Well, let's release the fairings. Now is a convenient time to do that, actually. Okay, and ignition. Gonna have to work on that. But we have tons of fuel. We have some margin here. I thought about putting a solid rocket motor. I was looking at a one segment SRB, uh, you know, one of the segments on the four slash five segment SRB. Uh, infamous one, because that's sort of the thickest one currently being made. Uh, it's uh, Diameter is a little bit off-putting because it's actually smaller than I want, but that was a possibility if it had a vacuum nozzle kind of thing. But that would obviously be not recoverable, though we wouldn't want it. That would be the cheap option. I thought about the kerosene HTP option and even making a kerosene HTP Raptor, but that didn't seem very good. If we can do this and make it recoverable from low Earth orbit, this is better. The reason for the Kerosene HTP Star Stage 1 is because there was no way to recover it. Right, it would be getting too far out. Okay, uh, a bit lopsided. Okay, 325 by 152. Just talking away as usual. Okay, switching to the plane. Okay, we're still out of the atmosphere too, uh, but its roll is horrible. Come on. This thing doesn't do roll very well. Much like Starship itself, the thrusters are so close to the center line of the body that they don't provide good roll control. Of course, eventually the aerodynamics will give it an opportunity to fix that, but I'd like it to do that beforehand. Come on, we're gonna hit the hard part of the atmosphere soon. Okay, I think it stopped. There we go. Okay, we probably don't need that much pitch. I don't think we have a choice. Okay. <laughs> we don't have a choice on how much pitch we're going to get. Uh, why? Why? No, don't do that. Uh, this is not nominal. This... It did that, this sort of thing sometimes before, and then I did something to fix it, but maybe we're a little bit off here. I guess the jet engines aren't working right now. Oh, I think they're spooling up now. Okay, okay, okay. Getting a hold of prograde, alright. Right, so now, carefully. Oh, well, we've got 20 minutes of fuel. I don't know if that'll cover the ground we need to cover. Ah, uh, maybe, actually. I don't know. If we get some height. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna belabor this. Obviously, that was not the intended trajectory here. Okay, let us try this again. SAS on, throttle is up. And I wonder if I should control from here to begin with. 
I don't know if it is or not. It didn't change the nav ball at all. Okay. Ignition. And launch. All right. And it keeps getting rid of my orbit info window. <laughs> oh, there we go. At least it's properly formatted. So we could probably put more payload than 30 tons on here. Right now, 30 tons represents only a little bit more than 2% of our launch mass. So that's not particularly good, though, of course, everything is being is recoverable except for that platform and the fairing and all, of course. Uh, so this is, I guess, not Rocket Lab approved, but uh, you get the idea. Oh, of course, they're ditching the second stage, though. But we can improve upon it. Again, we only have four Prometheus engines here because I wanted to be able to do the burn and then switch back to the carrier plane. If we ditch two of those engines, that's two tons there. Uh, this segment here is currently like two tons, so we could simplify that if I make a part, an adapter part in Blender instead of using tanks like that. If we had the engines fitted on the heat shield side, that might be more convenient and have sort of trap doors, if you will. That's complicated, though. Not entirely sure I want to complicate the heat shield. I know NASA has tended not to want to complicate the heat shield, so. Okay, bomb engine shutdown. And rolling. Okay, throttling down and getting rid of a few more engines. Gotta switch to kill rotation here, it might be safer. Okay, that's 4,000. Uh, separation. Okay, and we'll leave that be for now. Throttle up, uh, ignition. Actually, still kill rotation here. Oh, I wanted to separate the fairings before igniting the engines. Oh, well, they sort of slide off anyway. Hope the space plane will be alright. These engines do have throttling, and they are supposed to. So, we'll probably... Well, uh, given the time to apoapsis, maybe we can. I think I do need to pitch down a bit. We'll have plenty to spare as far as Delta V is concerned. So, again, we can carry more. But I want to get the basic system concept down here. So 284 by 159. Okay, and we want to make sure we're controlling from here. And I think I wanted 30 degree pitch. So this is in a good orientation. I think kill rotation is a good choice. Okay, it seems to have stabilized. I'll get ready to pitch down as necessary. One thing we don't want to do is flip out. Coming in hotter, considering we're not anywhere near orbital velocities, is probably not too bad. But this definitely needs to be uncrewed because the G forces are going to be huge. Okay, we are decelerating, experiencing high Gs. Uh, our pitch seems to be under control. Note the use of about half of our authority. Very important. Tampa Bay to our right there, as we would like. Okay, we are through that. Uh, now we must pitch down vigorously, or we will stall. We're bouncing up. This is sort of like a skip. An intentional skip, but we don't want to lose too much velocity in it. Uh, so 9.7 G's there. Uh, I'm going to pitch up just a little bit. It was also getting a little bit wobbly, pointing directly at prograde. Try the air brakes. Wish it wasn't constantly maxing out the pitch one way and then the other. That's not super comforting. I mean, in a pinch, we've got the jet engines, but I think we can make it. 
Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna have to take manual control and try to turn at some point. And... I guess I'll try now. So, we've got atmospheric autopilot. I'm going to start turning. It's a pretty stable aircraft. But that doesn't mean it can turn very well at above Mach 3, which we're at right now. We are that far from the Cape. About 65,000 feet for those used to feet when it comes to airplanes. We gotta bring in the air brakes now, because we actually need more velocity to get over there. We're below Mach 2. I'll prep the jet engines just in case. Let's just get that them in that slot. We're now below Mach 1. Oh, right there. We're sort of coming at the runway from a weird angle, though. Well, so far it's been 21 minutes, so it's sort of a time saver over the shuttle option, if you will. Using the space shuttle and having to do the whole shuttle re-entry deal. And more reusability, of course. Even if we always brought this down, it's uh, fairly functional in this case, as long as we have that expedited upper stage. Okay, yeah, because of our weird angle to the runway, we'll have to do a sharp turn here, though. Oh, let's not stall or anything. Uh, let me change to locked view. Well, I don't think we needed the jet engines, so let's switch to the drogue chute preparation, or drag chute preparation. RCS off. We're landing a bit heavy. I'm still carrying the methane and oxygen that was spare. Now, of course, re-entry with the second stage would take some time, so I'm not going to do that here. We're going to assume, since I've tested it before, uh, from higher orbit, that it'll work out here as well. Okay, we are down. Shoots. Shoots. Oh, too high. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> Drag chute deployment, not possible because we are too high. Got it. Oh, we got a little bounce there. Uh, that, that was the runway's fault. Uh, it's going to take our body flap. That was just unevenness in the runway. Okay, well, as this comes to a stop, I am, well, we'll, we'll just taxi off. I'm gonna say thanks for watching. I think we've got an interesting system here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.